I was fascinated by the idea of disappearing without a trace and uh, I started to explore the Franklin expedition that had set off in 1845 in search of the Northwest Passage and it was an extraordinary time because in, uh, that part of the Arctic was unmapped, it was unnavigated, it was just a pure white space at the top of the world. And I got interested in that narrative as a platform in which to study the Anthropocene because I went to the Arctic, I followed in their footsteps and um, I wanted to explore this really sad narrative about, you know, what happened to these guys who lost their lives on the glaciers. I travelled around the archipelago of Svalbard on a, a tall Barkentine ship. I was on an expedition myself, so it was a really incredible way to experience the Arctic because you're riding on water and you are travelling over the glaciers and seeing them break apart and calve. And I guess that whole experience of uh, being there in real time in the rawness of that place as it was melting was something that um, sort of woke me up to the fact that, you know, this place is vanishing and, you know, knowing that it's going to be gone in 20 years time, but actually being there and seeing it happen is a totally different thing. So I started to record the sounds of the glaciers melting. I worked with a seismologist, put microphones into the glaciers and speed up the sounds so that we could actually hear the cries of the earth. <laughs> photographic plates that were um, discovered in the glaciers and um, that had been developed many years later of people going in search of these expeditions and even though some of them just didn't return their cameras were discovered many years later so those images are something that I've used in the series of paintings that I made related to that I went to the National Library in Norway and I was given permission to extract these incredible images and a lot of them were um, like the images were erased, but then you'd see a part of a face or the fading kind of glacier and the impression that somebody had been there, but that it had been erased and rubbed out. So that idea of something, the impression that it leaves behind, like a clue to the past, and um, coming back as a portal of time into our present time, um, is, is a lot of the narrative that I've tried to bring into this project because we can't go back to the climate before, we, before it changed. We're here now, so this idea of trying to transport backwards and forwards is, is something I've explored. So in the paintings, I have used a lot of uh, materials where I've scraped back in, I put up lots of layers of paint down, and then worked out the compositions and then removed all of the paint so that there's these shadows and these impressions of something that you're not quite sure what it is, but you know that there is a truth there, you know that there's is a resonance and then I work into that and bring it uh, to the next stage. There's a really interesting material that's covering the front of the Solar Orbiter, which is um, a spaceship that's been launched in 2020, and it's going to a part of our sun we've never been before, and it's covered in a, a superb material made from charred bone and carbon, and it's going to investigate climate change. And I made a series of sculptures. Each one of them relate to a year that's come past since the Industrial Revolution, and they, they reminded me of the glaciers melting and they refer to the crack cartographies in, you know, that I saw and all these bits of broken, fragile earth. A lot of the processes that I used in order to crack the surfaces um, relate to heat because of the heat in the earth and the heat that's trapped in, in the atmosphere. So I wanted to use heat like compression, you know, that sense of like what's inside the earth to crack like the tectonic plates. So you feel this pressure you know because of course carbon is 
destroying our glaciers because it's, you know, it's getting stuck in the atmosphere. But yet carbon is who we are. I mean, we're flesh and bone. The stars is made from carbon. So if everything exploded in the world, we would return to carbon. <laughs>